All right. Uh, our second uh, keynote speaker for this morning is uh, Dr. Gun Tan Lee. Uh, so uh, I don't think Dr. Gun needs uh, uh, very much introduction. She is the president of the Bioenergy Society of Singapore and the main organizer of uh, our conference today. So I'm sure everyone knows her very well. She is uh, she's also a le senior lecturer at the School of Life Sciences and Chemical Technology at the Nian Polytechnic in Singapore. Uh, before she joined Nian, she, was, uh, she started and co-founded a company, Sun VCA Biotech uh, Private Limited. Uh, so uh, I won't take up too much time. I, like I said, uh, everyone knows Andy very well. Uh, she has been very active in the bioenergy uh, society here in Singapore and the bioenergy industry. Her presentation this morning on uh, zero waste upcycling food and agriculture byproduct through fermentation. So let us all welcome uh, Dr. Kun. Okay, thank you very much, Prof Tong, for your introduction. And thanks to Pro, uh, Prof Nick for your kind of introduction of the given overview of the food waste. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, how to upcycle the food waste uh, and ag agriculture waste through fermentation. Okay, so my I'm going to uh, introduce what is fermentation uh, in this talk and uh, what is the agro-industrial bioproducts and upcycling methods through industrial biotechnology and food biotechnology. So fermentation is not uh, anything new because we fermented food uh, is, um, yeah, in, on, uh, is on our shelf and in our kitchen. So we consume a lot of fermented food. So fermentation, there are a lot of definitions. Um, so, uh, so I'm not going to do any of this definition, uh, but my definition today is that bioconversion in the presence of live microorganisms. And sometimes you call it a bioconversion, sometimes you call it bioprocessing, but the, uh, the idea is that we must have live microorganisms. So what is the agri uh, food industry residue? So basically, uh, just now, uh, Nick have uh, briefly introduced it. So today, I'm going to focus on uh, what are the you know uh, different uh, waste. So these are basically the you know uh, lignocellulosic biomass, the main component, and including the fruit, pomace, fruit, vegetable peels, husks, bran, germ of cereals. Cereals or pods, stove, corn cobs, and stalks. And also, uh, those, uh, especially the vegetables, fruits, uh, waste, rich in polysaccharides, sugars, protein, enzymes, dietary fibers, and fatty acid. And they also have flavoring compound and bioactive compound. So, in terms of agriculture waste, the, uh, yeah, so the uh, basically are the straws and stems of the you know crops and the food the industry waste the basically are the bran stalks or peel of the fruits or skin of the fruits or oil cake so on and so forth. So this is the basically uh, composition of the agricultural residue. As you can see, they are basically uh, composed of lignin, cellulose, hemicellulose, and ash. So these are the basically main polymers in the agriculture waste. So in terms of food industry residues, besides this lignin cellulose, hemicellulose, there are also proteins and also other, you know, vitamin, uh, amino acids, you know, and also biophenolic compound, so on and so forth. So, uh, how to upcycle this uh, uh, such kind of waste through fermentation? There are two aspects. One is in industrial biotechnology aspect. The other is in food biotechnology. In terms of industrial biotechnology, okay, it can be used to produce enzymes, chemicals, fuels, and energy, and biopolymers, pesticides, and bio lubricant, bio surfactant, so on and so forth. However, those some of the uh, waste can also be used to produce food ingredients, uh, some uh, related ingredients such as single cell protein, microbial lipids, pigments, bioactive compound, flavoring compound, prebiotics, probiotics, and soluble fiber. 
So for the industrial biotechnology, basically the idea is to use the microbial cells to convert these straws, okay, the, uh, uh, the uh, crop straws to fuels, chemicals, materials, so on and so forth. So there are a lot of research has been done. The first uh, type of application is to produce enzymes. So for example, using white rot fungi or mushrooms, those kind of, uh, you know, these are all mushrooms, is to, uh, the, to convert this uh, lignocellulosic biomass, okay? And although you, you can see also some uh, uh, fruit, uh, fruit uh, byproduct into different kind of uh, uh, enzymes. So, so this is a so-called lignolytic enzyme, lactase and uh, you know, manganese peroxidase, lignin peroxidase, so on and so forth. Another type of, uh, so the early, uh, this is one of my early research. We also use this uh, in Singapore, collected the horticulturists to convert them to lactase. So another type of enzyme is cellulolic uh, uh, enzyme, cellulase, cellulose, and uh, beta glucidase. So it's also use of uh, fermented fungi to con uh, convert this, uh, you know, agriculture and food waste into this kind of uh, enzymes. And um, also high uh, cellulolytic, uh, cellulolytic enzyme uh, such as xenonase can also use this uh, filaments fungi to convert them to this enzyme. Uh, so that is one of my research, early, uh, early research is to use the horticulturist to produce cellulase, basically using uh, solid state fermentation. All right, so, and also other enzymes can also be produced using the waste. Uh, a series of food and the agriculture waste produce pectinase, lipase, manase, protein A, amylase, uh, alkali protein A, uh, so exopolygalactone A, and the tannins, lipase, so on and so forth. So uh, such kind of uh, waste uh, is actually a very good product to produce, uh, to produce uh, industrial enzymes. And so, and um, also, this kind of compound is also a good material to be converted to chemicals and fuels. With some examples here is to convert them to saccharine acid, lactic acid, and acinol. And also other chemicals, so biopeptide, biosurfactant, and uh, biolubricant, so on and so forth. So a lot of research is ongoing. Uh, so uh, basically, those uh, waste are lignocellulosic biomass. They are composed of cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin. So this makes them uh, because the, just like mentioned by uh, Nick, that uh, this the structure is very recalcitrant for digestion, right? So for the conversion of this kind of waste to, uh, for example, fuel, it needs to be pretreated and then need the, the, to be hydrolyzed using enzymes, cellulase, hemicellulase, to, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, uh, yeah, so hydrolyze them to different amount of sugars, and then the microorganisms can be used to uh, digest this mixture of the sugars to the fuel or chemical. Okay, so that's the because of the lignin, uh, so it's very uh, uh, recalcitrant to be treated and uh, this step is actually very energy consuming, right? So the process is quite expensive. So the, these are some of my group's research. So we focus on the developed microbial strains to produce enzymes, okay? So these are to, to be able to produce a, a cellulase in high titer. So, so that it can also have very good digestion, biomass hydrolysis probabilities. We are also focusing on the uh, engineering of recombinant yeast so that uh, the mixed uh, sugar can be fully utilized. You can see this is uh, uh, glucose, this is uh, uh, xylose. It can be immediately used and produce very high concentration of uh, uh, ethanol. Okay, so uh, 
And also, we also focus on, uh, uh, you know, uh, in situ enzyme production. Basically, we use the uh, oil palm MT fruit bunch to produce the enzyme on site. And then after pretreatment, we use the enzyme to uh, digest the pretreated biomass and to produce ethanol. Yeah, so this is the uh, uh, industrial biotechnology effort made in our group. We also you try to use this uh, oil palm MT4 bunch to produce biopolymer, so the PHB. And also other, uh, you know, other uh, uh, compound, maybe this uh, mucanic acid is also through uh, uh, metabolic engineering of yeast strain. Okay, so compared with this uh, lignocellulosic biomass, there is another biomass, it's called uh, citrus peel waste. It's currently very popular because this waste uh, is low in lignin. Um, so uh, uh, digestion is not so difficult. However, it also has challenges. It has this uh, uh, monosugar, it's galacturonic acid. And other uh, uh, monomer sugars, uh, arabinose, galactose, uh, raminose, so on and so forth. So uh, basically, uh, so the challenge you also produce, uh, you know, fermentation inhibitors. Well, um, so the challenge to con convert this compound, this waste to ethanol. So we must handle these uh, challenges. So this is the basically uh, different uh, citrus peel. Uh, 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 source and uh, this is the monomer sugar com uh, composition. You can see the uh, G G -L -U -A is the main monomer sugar. So the challenge will be to metabolic engineer the microbes to utilize this sh sugar. And this sugar is non-fermentable. It's a non-fermentable sugar. So a lot of uh, effort are making to make this a non-fermentable sugar to fermentable. Uh, fermentable. Okay, so so basically, this is the metabolic engineering of yeast strains to fermenting sugars derived from citrus peel waste. So basically, this sugar will be used and produced ethanol. So so after your yeah, yeah, so uh, genetic engineering, so some of the yeah this this uh, uh, sugar can also be uh, converted to other chemicals and even value added product vitamin C. So this is the biorefinery of citrus processing uh, waste. So basically it's a pretreatment enzymatic hydrolysis, just like a lignocellulosic biomass must hydrolyze to monomer sugar, then fermentation. This fermentation will be, if you use native uh, uh, yeast, it will produce the ethanol only, but if you use engineered yeast, it can produce, you know, can utilize this sugar and produce ethanol and also other value added products. Basically, that's the uh, summary of the industrial biotechnology application in upcycling of the agri-food industry uh, waste. So now I'm going to talk about uh, upcycling by food biotechnology, just like uh, uh, Nick mentioned just now. So the first step, what we try to do, we want to uh, recycle the, this uh, byproduct for food, human food utilization. So that's the focus of this part of the presentation. So agro-industry byproducts are rich in polysaccharides, sugars, proteins, enzymes, dietary fiber, fatty acid, flavors, aroma, aroma and the bioactive compounds. So the idea of upcycling this byproduct to food application basically is still using the live microorganisms as a microbial cell factory to convert them to microbial protein, lipids, pigments, and a lot of bioactive compounds, flavorable compounds, soluble fiber, amino acids, vitamin, increased digestibility, digestibility and improved nutrient value. So uh, firstly, I'm going to focus on the vegetable and the fruits byproducts. So production, this product, kind of product can be used to produce bioactive compounds, lipids, pigments, and enhance act, uh, antioxidant activities, and also can be used as a novel functional food ingredients. Uh, so, so this uh, uh, kind of compound, basically they are high in dietary fiber, rich in polysaccharide sugar, so on and so forth. And they have very high content, water content. The, their composition is very diverse and the locations are very scattered. 
So uh, biovalorization of vegetable and fruit byproduct, byproducts can increase the bioactive compound content, enhance the antioxidant activity, generate new functional materials and produce microbial lipids, pigments, and improve nutritional value. So you can see uh, there are a lot of work has been done using uh, different, you know, this is a mushroom and this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, fundamental fungi. Basically, they are food grade, food grade uh, uh, microorganisms. So they can convert a, a diverse uh, substrate, uh, the uh, fruit and the, you know the in, uh, agriculture substrate into phenolic compound, you know, and also flavonoid, uh, triterpenes, and the higher lipid and the other, you know, uh, you know, bioactive compounds, phenolic compounds, gluconic acid, bioactive compounds, and flavonoids, fruit flavor, so on and so forth. There are lots of research has been done. And when we uh, want to uh, upcycling this kind of waste, we always need to think about uh, fermented food, okay? Fermented food, because fermentation technology has been used in fermented food for a, a time, for man, uh, you know, for thousands of years. So, the, for example, there's a sauerkraut, kimchi, milk, kefir, yogurt. They are actually uh, uh, fermented by this uh, lactic acid bacteria. So they are food grade bacteria. So if you, uh, so one of the methods to upcycling the vegetable residue is to use the LAB. Uh, lactic acid bacteria to convert them to probiotics because uh, LAB is probiotics to lactic acid and other organic acid to enhance the antioxidant activity, reduce pH and lengthen the shelf life. So uh, basically uh, in such kind of technology, the indigenous LAB is used. The produced lactic acid may be in reintegrated in the food chain as a flavor and to enhance the protein digestibility and the sensory properties after this fermentation and it could be used as food ingredient. After the, the uh, just like I mentioned, uh, uh, Dr. Nickley uh, um, mentioned about this uh, ugly food, Actually, ugly food can be used directly as to make kimchi. Can also be used to use as the, to make a, a you know nutrition powder. Just after fermentation, make them a dry powder and use as food ingredient. So there's uh, some examples. So there's a fermentation of this uh, citrus pomids uh, by lactic acid bacteria to generate new functional materials. So, uh, so basically by this uh, lactic acid bacteria fermentation and it, redu it, it reduces the bitterness and the umami taste and the increases acidity and the fermented products contain both flavonoid and the probiotics can serve as a new functional food ingredients. Another example is used uh, to ferment the chickpea uh, and the mealing byproduct to improve the nutrition value. So basically this uh, uh, waste will be treated by protein A's and xylodins and then fermented by LAB. So after fermentation, this uh, peptide content is reduced. The fermentation also increased the total free amino acid content and the protein digestibility. So you can see this is the free amino acid has been increased greatly compared to those uh, before fermentation. And this uh, most important, this uh, anti-nutritional factors uh, has been reduced. This uh, fatty acid is an, an uh, anti-nutritional factor, which to uh, to uh, inhibit the nutrient be absorbed by people, right? So uh, that's the fermentation uh, advantage. And also uh, in another example, this uh, food waste uh, was used to, uh, to produce uh, pigment. Okay, so the red pigment you, uh, using this fungus. All right. Uh, so another example is to produce a lipid. Okay, so it's, there are two filaments fungi is used uh, and the substrate is a grape promise, grape promise. So a wine industry produce a lot of such kind of uh, waste. And after this fermentation, uh, the lipid can be produced. And also beta carotene, and this is another catenoid has been created, is a bioactive compound. Also, you know, one more uh, uh, 
example is the so after this uh, fermentation by Aspergillus niger and this uh, rosette plus oligosporous is actually the tempe uh, fungus okay it has been increased the phenolic antioxidant activity and the lipid content so you can see the uh, first the fermentation for vegetable and the fruit byproduct can be done uh, to to be uh, yeah can be done also uh, another example i want to mention is uh, the one okra mentioned by uh, nick okay just now okay so okra is a byproduct of tofu okay so basically soil bean will be soaked and then grinded and then the the liquid will be squeezed out is the soil bean and the, the solid part is called the uh, okara 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 is a paste that is rich in fiber so 50% is fiber 25% protein 10% is fat uh, so each uh, kilo of uh, kilogram of soybean used, it produces about 1.1 to 1.2 kg of okara. And okara consists of about 80% of water and 4% of protein. And uh, most of the protein are insoluble. Okay, so the okara protein actually contains all the essential amino acids and have a very protein efficient, uh, very high protein efficient index that is even higher than the soybean milk and tofu, but it's very low, it has very low solubility. There are a lot of potential of this okara application. Uh, However, due to the high content of water, it can be decomposed very easily. Before you are going to utilize it, it may have been decomposed on site. So when you want to use this kind of uh, food waste to produce value added products, you must uh, treat it on site. Uh, so so uh, biovalorization of Okara kind, uh, you know, uh, uh, reduce the anti-nutritional factors. Uh, such as the fatties uh, uh, and the trypsin inhibitors. And trypsin inhibitors can also be degraded by this microorganism in order to improve the nutrition value. And fermentative microorganisms can metabolize these and other factors such as uh, allergenic proteins and by providing a final fermented product with improved nutrition and digestibility. Okara can also be used to produce microbial proteins and the increased protein content. Okay, so this is a one example to use this uh, solid state fermentation of Okara mixed with bacillus and another fungus for degrading anti-nutrition factors. So that's the main application. So application is the fermentation bacillus uh, species can actually uh, improve the nutrition value because it uh, de degrades these anti-nutrition factors. And also another uh, kind of uh, application is directly uh, transform, do transformation, fermentation, use Okara. okara. Then this uh, transformed products can be used uh, as a uh, ingredients in you know in your uh, milk in your you know biscuit bread so on and so forth so fermentation can reduce the content of raw fiber increase the content of soluble fiber proteins amino acids and the iso uh, flavones as well as a decomposing the fatty acid, the, the anti-nutrient compound. Fungi, bacteria, and yeast are therefore very important for the production of functional ingredients and food products out of this okara. Okay, so, uh, so for example, this is one example. So the tempeh, instead of using the raw soil bean, use the okara to produce the tempeh. Okay, so it's the same principle. It's basically to ferment the okara. So it can produce bioactive compound, produce mushroom polysaccharides, it improve antioxidant activity, produce food for direct consumption. This can be directly used for food consumption and the degrade okara dietary fiber. So after fermentation, the dietary fiber has been decreased um, and increase the free amino acids significantly because of the digestion and the fermentation. So the peptide or protein has been digested and prepare okara tempeh and even miso. So this is another example using the tempeh to produce miso. 
Okay, so uh, this use this fungus and uh, uh, higher beta glucidase activity than koji. So koji basically is using this as particular arrhythmia, but in this uh, 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 research, use a different fungi. It produces more beta glucidase, and it has strong uh, TPPH radical scavenging and super oxidized ionic scavenging and anti mutagenic activities. These are actually the antioxidant activity and the anti cancer activity. And this uh, okara seasoning is a, can be this miso can be served as a seasoning. It's higher than other low salt miso like fermented seasoning prepared with the steam, soybean, and koji. So you see, uh, so even it's more healthier than the conventional soybean koji. So uh, another example is use the bacillus uh, strain to uh, improve the antioxidant activity of the okara. Okay, this is in China, okay. Uh, and the peptide pie, peptide con uh, content was increased, and the protein A's activity was increased, and the uh, reducing power increased. So it means the antioxidant increase. This is antioxidant activity, and this is the reducing power. You can see this uh, okara has a high, much higher antioxidant activity than the soil bean itself. So uh, this one, uh, I think is a lot of us are very familiar with uh, Prof Liu Shaoquan. Actually, what he used is use the Akara to produce beverage. His technology is basically to use enzyme to uh, digest this Akara to sugars. And then he used the you know, lactic acid bacteria and the yeast to ferment this uh, sugar to this uh, probiotic beverage. So that has a lot of anti, uh, just like mentioned uh, in early articles, it produced a lot of uh, antioxidant and uh, nutrition uh, amino acid. So it's a very uh, nutritional beverage out of Okara. Uh, actually, is uh, uh, from this technology, its company a uh, company is being off is uh, doing yeah, it's actually uh, uh, commercialized. So another. Uh, uh, Food waste I want to mention is about uh, is wheat bran. So wheat bran modification, fermentation improves uh, wheat bran's nutritional uh, value and uh, you know structural and functional properties and enhance its use in food formulation. Again, we want to use it for food fermentation. Okay, so wheat brown is a byproduct of wheat green milling and is a great resource of dietary fiber up to 45 grams per 100 gram, B vitamins, minerals, and bioactive compound. Nutritional composition of health benefits, soluble fiber and insoluble dietary fiber. The potential of wheat brown is limited due to its poor suitability as a food ingredient due to the presence of anti-nutrients components, sensitive uh, chemicals, and the endogenous uh, enzymes and the insoluble dietary fiber. So fermentation improves the nutritional and the structural functional properties of wheat brown and enhances its use in food formulation. So let's say, take a look of the, you know, some research has been done. So wheat brown has been uh, fermented by this uh, uh, microorganisms and improve the antioxidant activity and the nutrition quality. Another example is to use uh, another uh, two lactic acid bacteria to ferment with brown and is also improved the nutrition, physical and the flavor properties of with brown. So uh, one, uh, one more example is use the dry yeast to ferment with brown. It also improved the uh, in nutritional and physical and flavory properties of wheat brown. So basically the uh, fermentation or bioprocessing of wheat brown can increase the content of bound, bound phenolic compound because although there are a lot of uh, uh, active compound in the okara, uh, in the wheat brown, it is bound with the polymer. So the fermentation can release the bound compound and enhance antioxidant activity, increase soluble protein content, increase digestibility, reduce total dietary fiber content, increase soluble fiber content, enhance nutrition release, 
in the digestion system, increase free total phenolic content, increase water extractable arabian xylen content, decrease the content of fatic acid, the anti-nutrient compound, improve water holding capacity and water retention capacity of fermented brands. So some examples is, uh, yeah, so, so use the, this, uh, uh, it's a one example is to uh, enhance the bioavailability of this uh, ac um, active bioactive compound through fermentation. So another example is to enhance the digestibility uh, uh, to reduce the reduce the dietary fiber content, and uh, you know uh, to increase the content of soluble protein and the bran. Okay, so this is also another uh, uh, example. And one more example is to use this uh, fungus to ferment the wheat brown, also enhance the antioxidant activity and improve the texture and make it more suitable in food formulation and also reduce the content of fatty acid. Okay, basically, I'm going to give a summary of upcycling the agro uh, industry byproduct for food application. It's basically fermentation can increase the phenolic compound content, enhance the digestibility, increase soluble fiber and protein content, increase the functional properties such as antioxidant, anti inflammatory activities, and the immunomodulatory effects, enhance water holding capacity, make it more suitable in food formulation and potential in generating novel ingredients and novel food. Okay, what do microorganisms do in fermentation? Basically, what they do is to degrade these fibers to small molecules. After degrading, uh, change, they change the fiber structure, improve the fiber digestibility, decrease delta fiber content, release nutrients such as bioactive compound, release the soluble proteins, increase free amino acid content, and degrade other chemicals such as uh, degrade these anti-nutrient factors, fatty acid, and also synthesize new proteins, increase the soluble protein content, and synthesize primary, secondary metabolites, increase the soluble fiber content, enhance flavors and smell, add nutrient value, produce pigments, and grow cell biomass, such as the application in single cell protein, microbial lipids, and the microprotein production. So what do, uh, okay, so the challenges of using such kind of waste is the loca locations is scattered. So it has logistics problems and vegetable fruit, pomies, or cara blue spent grains has very high water content, is unstable, can be easily decomposed, contaminated. And we also uh, encounter inconsistent quality from batch to batch. It is very wet. If you want to dry it, it is very energy consuming. It is complicated composition and the reconcentrated structure. Okay, so microorganisms used in such kind of fermentation are basically generally regarded as safe, grass, microorganisms, yeast, bacteria, and fungus are, have all been used. So uh, in terms of the concept of a circular economy, basically after you know, crop fruits, vegetables, after harvesting and processing, it creates a, a large amount of byproduct. Actually, this amount is, takes about 30% of this dry mass. So our idea is to, in the first hand, we want to do something to bring it back to the food chain. So through fermentation. So we should learn from nature, okay? Nature, for example, kombucha, kimchi, and water, uh, milk kefir, basically they are also uh, microorganisms, it's a consortium. So it's a fungus, yeast, and even fungi, okay? It's uh, acting together. For example, for uh, kimchi, there are a lot of lactic acid bacteria are functioning. They are contributing to the metabolite smell and taste. So what are the future perspectives? Future project is that we should develop microbial consortium to maximize the utilization of the raw materials. In the examples where a lot of the cases the lactic acid bacteria are used, but actually lactic acid bacteria may not be the best microorganism to uh, digest this kind of fi fiber content. So um, 
in order to be fully utilized, maybe uh, phenolic fungi will be better and maximize the nutritional value of the final products. So um, we need to um, engineer the microbial consortium so we, it can produce the desired product, for example, microbial protein, microbial lipids, and the microbial pigments. And these are the very important ingredients for our future meat. Okay, so we can microbial are uh, very flexible, can, uh, can produce all such kind of ingredients for our future meat. At the same time, it can also contain bioactive compound, flavory compound, soluble fiber, amino acid, vitamin, and uh, so on and so forth. If those kind of things has been yeah, incorporated in our future meat, so, uh, so uh, this uh, uh, waste can be a sustainable resource for our future alternative uh, protein product. Okay, thank you. That's all for my presentation. Uh, so now you are free to ask any question. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Gung. So uh, it was a very interesting presentation. So we I believe we'll have a number of questions. So for all the participants, please do type in the questions in the Q&A box and uh, we'll, be, we'll be reading out the questions for you. There's already one question there from Jonathan. Um, Jonathan says, uh, thank you for the interesting talk. I would like to inquire on the necessity of purifying the products when upcycling to higher value food products because of contaminants from the mixed microbial community as well as other undesirable chemical residues. Assuming that the substrate is a mixed food waste rather than a pure stream. Are there many processes involved which could increase the cost prohibitively? Yeah, so for such kind of recycling, actually uh, the, uh, the waste must be treated on site because it is going to be used for food consumption. So the waste must be treated on site, must be sorted, treated, washed. And uh, so just like what, what we do for fermented food. Uh, so uh, at least uh, we are trying to what we do is to reduce the waste, uh, which we cannot be used for food consumption. Yeah, so it must be purified, must be sorted and washed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah thank you, thank you, Dr. Gun. So I, I also have a question. While we wait for more questions to be uh, coming in, yeah. So related to that, right, I think the question is when you produce the one product from these food waste, is, is, is there is it is in a mixture of other compounds that is in the food waste already. So to get that product that you have, you need to remove all the other compounds that are being present to get that useful material coming out. So is that going to be expensive or is that going to make it more uh, unsustainable at the end? Okay, so for... Uh, so this is uh, um, basically is to use fermentation to upcycling to improve the nutritional value. Actually, we don't do any uh, for purification extraction. It's everything fermented will be used as a food ingredient. Yeah, so it's the uh, fiber, soluble fiber, protein, amino acid, vitamin, and all the you know other uh, flavoring compound will be directly used as a food ingredient in food but formulation. In food, yes. Yeah, but in the food waste itself, right? There, you're only converting one compound. So all of the others compound in there, can, can they be eaten or can they be used? No, uh, so, so uh, for such kind of conversion, uh, we are very selective in the food waste. It cannot be so uh, diverse, so mixture. For example, we focus on, uh, you know, you know, one product or, you know, beer product or beer product. It's very homogeneous, can, uh, yeah. So if it's diverse, then, uh, yeah, so we don't, uh, because it's for food consumption, so uh, we, we are very picky in the, uh, in the source, right? So, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, basically the conversion is still convert the carbohydrate. So a lot of them is uh, convert the carbohydrate, degrade the fiber, degrade the cellulose, hemicellulose, and release the phenolic compound, uh, degrade the protein and produce amino acid, degrade the fiber, produce sugar, oligosaccharides. It also have you know, prebiotic effects, so on and so forth. So everything will be used for food.
Great, thank you. There's a question from Laura. Yeah, hello, she says, uh, hello, thanks for this talk. The perspective with microbial consortia aim to target one type of raw material or to have a more Swiss tool fermentative consortia to mix the raw material sources. Uh, microbial uh, consortia it, means uh, is you, you use not on, um, one kind of bacteria. It's you must, uh, according to your application, uh, for example, you want to digest the, you know, the biomass. So uh, maybe you use the, you know, uh, you know, phylonic fungi. If you want to produce probiotics, you can also use a lactic acid bacteria. But if you want to produce uh, microbial protein, so you need to use the fungi that has very high protein content. So it's uh, in terms of uh, biomass utilization and also the product optimization. Yeah, so uh, it's not that uh, mixed uh, source, it's mixed uh, microorganisms. So it's so-called consortia. Great, thank you. Uh, there's a question from uh, Anonymous of Family, so it says, Dr. Gun. Thanks for the various options of upcycling for food application. What are your views to tackling the challenges that you have outlined, especially the scattered problem? Also, please share your view on the cost and energy efficiency of these various upcycling methods. Which do you think is most desirable? Yeah, so this is a very challenging uh, yeah, uh, question. Lah. So uh, if we want to do this kind of recycling, we should tackle this problem first. The best solution is to set up the plant near the source. Okay, so for example, the brewers spent screen after it immediately it was uh, yeah, released from the you know plant and immediately use it for your fermentation. Yeah, so for Okara, it's the same. You know, uh, I think the Prof Liu Shaochen it has a spin off company, and uh, he, they are using it. They should have solutions to solve this kind of. So uh, currently, this kind of uh, waste has very high content of water. So the one of the solution is to freeze them first, freeze them first, and then uh, take it back. Okay, then uh, to do uh, all kind of fermentation. Yeah. So the plant, the you know upcycling plant, should not be so far away from the source. Thank you, Dr. Kun. So um, would there be other questions from the audience or the panel members, Dr. Kun? Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, there's one more question from Lama. So this is uh, dear Dr. Andy, great presentation. So among the various research that you have performed, which one method or fermentation procedure is simple and economically viable to be adopted to many kinds of food waste applications? Okay, that's a good question. I have talked about industrial biotechnology and the food biotechnology. Okay, industrial biotechnology needs a lot of uh, processes for pretreatment, enzymatic digestion, and for, you know, uh, you know, metabolic engineering or yeast. This kind of uh, technology, uh, uh, yeah, is very expensive. But in terms of food biotechnology, as long as we know how to ferment food, okay, so you know, uh, it's a technology can be done, can be done, because fermented food technology is very well known and very well established, can be very easily adopted. That's why when we think about this upcycling of the food waste for food application, we need to always think about how fermented food is prepared. So we are going to use that kind of fermented foods, just for example, kimchi, okay, sauerkraut, cheese, how they are made, okay? So you can see this, uh, something can be done. So what we is it's not very complicated technology. Is you must uh, you know maintain very good. So most often we use solid state fermentation, and the, you must control the environment, the temperature, humidity, of course a sterile environment, so that uh, to avoid the contamination. And then it can be after fermentation, just like the tempeh or kara tempeh, can be used for food consumption directly.
Yeah, so we use is the fermented food technology to do this kind of upcycling. Great, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kung. Um, maybe one last question because we are past time for the first session. So uh, one question from Dr. Lo. He says, uh, hi, Dr. Kung. Will microbial consortia generate waste streams after the targeted industrial bioconversion, which can harm the environment? since most of them are genetically engineered strains. Okay, so as I mentioned, when for food application, we don't use genetically modified organisms. We use uh, the food grade grass, generally regarded safe macro. That's why we cannot do engineering of the micro, individual microorgan. We engineer the consortia. So basically we will consider what microorganisms will be put in the consortium, right? That is very important. We want to achieve a better utilization, better function. It's through the microbial consortium. But in this case, it's not GMO. It's a consortium of different microorganisms, for example, yeast, bacteria, and fungi, and even mushroom. Okay, so basically they are edible. They are food grade microorganisms. They are not GMO. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Dr. Gun. Uh, we greatly appreciate your presentation this morning and very wonderful presentation. So let us all thank uh, Dr. Gun and uh, also Professor Lin Li earlier this morning for the keynote session that start that kicked off the BESS conference. Thank you both.